Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Today's video is a continuation of the last video that I made, which left us off at 10.16 a.m. and 10.44 a.m. Stephen Stearns arrived home after putting Maddie in the trunk of his vehicle. He's at home between 10.16 and 1044 you remember at the Holiday Inn uh, business office on the top floor of the parking garage he put Maddie in the trunk of his vehicle after taking her out of the front passenger seat and her body was limp as he placed her into the trunk of his vehicle so he's at home from 1016 a.m. to 1044 a.m. and Jen is at her doctor's appointment so while Maddie is still in his trunk, he heads out. So he's you know, likely moving around inside the complex somewhere. 1056 at 1102, it sort of pings generally in an area. Could even be still at his home here. And then 1103, he's heading up. And I'm basing this off of the ping data and where the towers are pointing. So 1103, he's heading up. And currently this is West Carroll Street. Then 1103 on West Carroll Street. 1104 takes a left onto, looks like Dyer Boulevard. And Dyer Boulevard, I think, is one that they use often because if you're gonna leave the apartment complex and get onto 192, you go out the back gate and you head down south on Dyer and it takes you right to 192. So right now he's on Dyer, heading north, and then it skips to 1114, and we're quite a ways up here, uh, currently on John Young Parkway, and you know near North Thacker Avenue, and these are just cell tower ping. This is my interpretation of it. 1116 in this area. 1117. Uh, very close to the McDonald's, you know, the bogus story that he told about, oh, she didn't want to go to McDonald's, but, you know, I gave her a Danish anyways. Even had a, a flavor to it. I mean, this guy is a total sociopath, psychopath. 11.17 uh, there. And then he makes it to uh, E-Smoke, uh, E-Smoker Online Vape Shop. So he does go there, and he's there for five minutes. I think this whole trip is just to make it look like, you know, I'm just doing my normal things. I mean, how could I have been a killer or did something to Maddie? Look at me. I'm, I'm just doing regular things. But here's where it gets interesting. You would think he would head home at that point. But then in 1127, he heads up north. And then 1128... He's a little further north. I'm just basing again on the cell tower ping information. He's staying on South John Young Parkway. And 1129, up in this area, almost to Central Florida Parkway. Then 1131 a.m., he's in this area. And then if you look right here, there is a cell tower that's right in this location. You can actually see it on uh, Google Earth, the 3D mode. So see it right there? That's the cell tower that they're using in the documents. So let's take a look at that. If you zoom in, see there's a cell tower just past Central Florida Parkway and Stephen Stern's vehicle and his phone are with him. So currently he has his phone with him at this point. So on this trip, it, he took it with him because he wants them to see that he was doing the mundane stuff. But again... Madeline is in the trunk of his vehicle while he's doing this drive here. So that's a cell tower. And again, I found it. It's right there. And that means the vehicle is somewhere up in this area here. Now check this out. There's a storage facility right here. You know, self-storage. The rest of these places are hotels and perhaps an apartment. Uh, there's really nothing in that area other than that storage facility. So it makes me wonder, does he have anything in the storage facility? Is he putting something in the storage facility? Or does he even have an association with it at all? But it's really the only place that I found 
that um, seemed possibly relevant to what he was doing. I mean, I guess he could have pulled in here and just sat for a minute and smoked some of his his new vape <laughs> juice or whatever the hell you call it. Okay, now you can see right here at 11.41, he leaves the vape shop. You can see how the cell tower is pinging on the side here. So at 11.41, that means he's on John Young Parkway and just about to uh, cross over Central uh, Florida Parkway, which is right here. So he's heading this direction, 1141. But that means he was in the area for 10 minutes. Let me know in the comments if you think it's possible or even likely that he was going to that storage facility there, and that's just something that wasn't mentioned in the documents. There's many, many documents out there that have been redacted, so we don't know if there's a storage facility um, mentioned in those documents somewhere. So 1141, uh, we'll put that in here. 1142, he's right in this area. Then 1143, is heading south. He's just generally heading home now. 1144, right there. 1145, right in this area. Again, basing it on cell tower uh, location. 1146, right there. And apparently still 1146 in that area, right there. And then 1147 makes his way by Hunters Creek Boulevard. 1148, right in that area. 1151, he's taking a right on um, Osceola Parkway, and then we'll go on to Dyer at 1157 a.m. So he goes on to Dyer, then drives all the way back and he's home by 11.57 a.m. Now, when he gets home at this time, Jennifer is at home as well as Maddie's cell phone. And Maddie, for this entire hour that he's at home talking to Jennifer, her body is in the trunk of his car outside in the parking lot. I mean, this guy is an absolute monster. All right, and then at around 12.49, he has already left the apartment. So a couple minutes after that, he drives out and he is at a Dyer Boulevard and 192. And this is at 1249, which is right down here. So he likely exited the facility like this, drove around and then out or maybe even this direction and then went through the gate right here, then took a right and headed down in this direction and he's at uh, 192 and Dyer. I mean, there's other ways he could go. He could have gone out the front gate and then south and then taken a right right here. All right, then at 1251, he is at 192 and Emory Avenue. At 1254, probably a light there kept him from moving quicker. Uh, but he got to, in this location, at 1254 p.m., 192 and John Young Parkway. And yeah, I would imagine there'd be a light there. And then at 12.59, he's over here at uh, 192 and Fortune Road. And then 1 o'clock at 192 and Bill Beck Boulevard. And then 105, there's a GPS uh, coordinates given only, probably a specific address. They didn't want to give it out. And then at 108 p.m. at 192 and Sergeant Graham uh, road or drive actually right here then it also at 108 just a short distance later it's spotted at 108 p.m. at 192 and Old Canoe Creek Road and then at 109 p.m. at 192 and Neptune and then right here at 192 and Budinger Avenue at 1010 p.m. then at 113 p.m. at 192 in Vermont and then 1.14 p.m. at 192 and New York Avenue. And then also at 1.14 p.m. right here at 192 in Michigan. Then at 1.15 p.m. at 192 and Delaware Avenue. And then at 1.15 p.m. at 192 and Mississippi Avenue. I mean, he didn't realize that there was that many cameras. I mean, he spotted all the time. He thought he was clever enough 
to leave his cell phone at home. And it seems like he left his cell phone at home whenever he was doing something sort of nefarious with Maddie's body. Like when he's driving around with her in the vehicle, uh, lifeless, apparently driving around in the vehicle. He left his cell phone at home. I'm not really sure why he did that on that one. It seems like you want him to um, drive around and have her body be visible, but I guess he realized that he was going to be doing other things um, with her, so just wanted the visual you know, surveillance camera shots of him moving around with her body. Apparently, you know, he wants it to look like she's just asleep, but he was going in these other places that he couldn't explain, so he wanted to make sure his cell phone was left at home. Unfortunately for him, there's cameras all over the place that picked him up in various locations. So on this drive right here, he left his cell phone at home, and so right now at the house is, or the apartment, is Maddie and Jen, both of their phones are at home, and Stefan Stern's phone is at the apartment. All right, then at 1.16 p.m., he is at uh, Old Hickory Tree Road and Creative Inspiration Gate North. So I'm assuming, so since this is Creative Inspiration right here, uh, maybe that's the North Gate. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's right in this area somewhere. So it's right there at 1.16 p.m. And here is Old Hickory Tree Road all the way down to Hickory Tree Road and around to the crime scene. But let's take a look at let's take a look at this image right here. So from you know that old Hickory Tree Road at the top up here where we just stopped next to that school, it takes 12 minutes to drive the 8.9 miles to the crime scene over here. So that means he would arrive at the crime scene at around 1:30. You know, it could be a little earlier, but I'm assuming if he got a flat tire, he's going to be driving a little bit slower. But it's just around 1.30. It could be 1.28, um, you know, one, even 1.27 to 1.30. And he makes his way to the crime scene. So he would have got there at around 1.30. And here is the crime scene. Now, we've shown this before, but I think he pulled over to the side of the road right here. And I think he put a jack next to his tire and then opened the trunk and then he looked this direction right here and if he saw a car coming like you see right there he wouldn't come however on this side of the road you could see a car coming from way over here through the trees driving around and so he could just look over there and if he didn't see anybody coming way over there he's good but his biggest problem is this direction where it kind of comes around a corner there so he must have opened that trunk up when the coast was clear, grabbed her and sprinted through this open gate here and then around really quick around the corner here, placed her body there, uh, probably even behind this tree first. And when he kept noticing the coast was more clear, he placed her body in there and then covered her with some of these same um, pieces of, you know, I don't know if you call it like straw or whatever you want to call it, weeds, place it on top of her. And then he probably... I mean, I'm just trying to picture how he would have done this. After he placed her there, he had to make sure the coast was clear again. So when he looked back over, he could see that no car was coming this direction. So then he probably had to kind of sneak around to this side of the bush and look that direction. And when he saw nobody coming, he sprinted out again. He just took off like a bullet and ran over to his car. And then it made it look like he was just working on his flat tire again. I mean, a car actually drove by him while he was there working on his vehicle. He had his backwards baseball cap on, etc. So he gets into the vehicle after he fixes it, and then he drives that direction. But he's at the crime scene for about you know 25 to 30 minutes. And so that means he likely was actually fixing his tire. Now, you might still argue, did he intentionally give himself a flat tire at, when he pulled over to give it an, a reason why the trunk would be open? That's what some people think. But man, that's such a reckless place to stop and also place 
her body right next to the road. It seems like he had another plan and literally got a flat tire. So let's take a look at this screenshot. From 1.30 to 2 p.m., he's at the crime scene, you know, approximate amount of time, and then he takes off, and it's a 12-minute drive up to here, and he would come out up at the top over here, you know, 2.11, 2.12, something like that. And here we go. At uh, 2.11, makes its way up to the top right here at 2.11, at 192 and Old Hickory Tree Road. Then again at 192 and Mississippi Avenue. Then 192 and Delaware Avenue. Then at 192 in Michigan. 192 in New York. Then 216. That's over here at uh, 192 and Budinger Avenue. Then 192 in Neptune. A lot of these are the same cameras that picked them up coming in. And if you notice, there's no stopping. He didn't go to the target. He didn't pull over anywhere. It was a straight line, basically, to the crime scene and out. None of the time on 192 is there any pausing or stopping. So then at 218, he's at 192 and Old Canoe Creek Road. Now the stopping, if he does stop, it's just at a light because they're only like a minute or so at various locations. Then at 219, he's at 192 and Sergeant Graham Drive. Then now we have another GPS coordinate, which is right here, uh, spotted again in this location, near Academy Drive and 192. Then 192 and Simpson Road at 226 p.m. Then 228 at 192 and Bill Beck Boulevard. Then right here at 229 at 192 and Fortune Road. And then they go all the way to 238. He is at um, 192 and John Young Parkway. Now there's probably a lot of traffic in this area. As a matter of fact, let I me mean, look at this. Let me turn off the roads sign here. Look at the traffic right here. See that? I mean, it just shows you how long you might have to wait to get through one of these lights, especially on a major uh, road like uh, John Young Parkway. I mean, look how many lanes there are. One, two, three, four, five, six lanes going this direction. All right, so that's at 2.38 p.m. at 192 and John Young Parkway. And then... 239 at 192 and North Emory Avenue. And then also at 2.43 p.m. at 192 and Dyer Boulevard. And as you can see right here, this is the... Jen has just left the house at this point. And this is 192 and Dyer. And he is at home alone at 2.47 because Jen has already taken off to pick up Maddie at school. So he's at home right now, and also Maddie's phone is with Jen because he, she is bringing it to Madeline at the school. So he's at home alone right now. And he has just dropped off, finally you know, accomplished his mission, as he likes to call it, on this day by driving around with Madeline's body propped up uh, puts her in the trunk, drives around to make it look like he's just having a leisurely drive to go to the vape shop, but then mysteriously goes up next to a storage facility, and then he heads down south, back to the apartment, and he makes it back to the apartment, and then Jen comes home from you know her doctor's appointment, and they're they're home together, and then after about an hour of that, imagine I mean during that whole hour, you know obviously Madeline's body's in the trunk of his vehicle while he's at home there. And then he does this whole route. I mean, you can see it right here. So in the morning, he drove up there all the way up near that storage facility, then back down, and then he sat at home for an hour, and then he drove right here. There's no stopping, except for the lights. Then he comes down this direction, and then he's over here at the crime scene. He places her body in the hedges over here. Then he takes off, goes back this direction, makes his way to 192 and there's no hesitation driving driving all the way back home just misses Jennifer 
and he's at home. So we'll go over his movements in the later part of the evening in the next video. Uh, but let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you think it's uh, even likely that he was going to that storage facility? We just don't know about it because in those documents there is a ton of redacted information and maybe it mentions that in those. Also, do you think, again, knowing that the car never really slowed down at all until it got to uh, into this area and when it stopped at the crime scene, do you think, again, that he planned to have the flat tire or was it something that really happened? To me, it feels like it really happened because it's such a poor choice of a location to put her body, and he also sat there for 30 minutes. But it's also interesting to think that did he have a flat tire while he was driving on 192 and just kept driving until he could find a place really quick to pull over? Or did he stop somewhere on this road, on Hickory Tree Road up in this area, and then make it here and was only at the crime scene for maybe 20 minutes? Um, I guess we don't know the answer to that, but maybe law enforcement has more details than we do at this point uh, regarding that, uh, given their further investigation. Well, all right, everybody. Thank you all very much for watching. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and perhaps consider becoming a channel member. I would really appreciate it. And we will see you guys later. So, as I always say, until next time, be safe out there.